Then we move on to the asset section, and this is going to give you details of the client's assets, and you're gonna see all the, the changes in those assets with additions, withdrawals, the return that they're earning. Um, so all those pieces will be covered in this asset section. So like the cash flow section, we're gonna start with a couple of graphs. First is the account summary graph. You can see how their total account values change over time and kind of a colorful representation of how their different accounts um, change over time, whether it's taxable, equity, tax-free, tax-deferred, or retirement accounts. So we can see they're depleting most of their assets other than they have some retirement accounts remaining at the end of the projection here. You can also adjust how the program reinvests surplus cash flow. So if we take a look back at our data input here, under assumptions, surplus allocation, this is what the program is going to do with any surplus. So prior to retirement, in this case, we have 20% of that surplus going into a taxable account, so a taxable savings type account, 80% of it going into equity and other, so things like investment accounts. After age 65, that is changing to 40% taxable and 60% equity. So you could just click on edit allocation to change how that surplus is treated and reinvested by the program. So then we have an account summary. This is the number schedule that's going to be supporting that graph we just saw. So you can see how those account balances are changing over time. And so you can see also the total on the far right hand side. Again, we can use the audit trail to break any of these numbers down. Several of the reports in this as asset section are really going to be supporting the numbers that you see here. So if we wanted to get a detail on all the elements of the taxable account and how that's changing each year, we can go to report C4, which is the next page. Oops, excuse me, it's actually, um, we have a total assets account first uh, before we get into there. So let me talk about this one and then we'll take a look at the taxable accounts. Total working assets is going to just combine the, the assets into one, one category, but we can see all the pieces that are impacting the, the account balance on a high level here. So for their total account balance, we can see any contributions being made to those assets, and we can see any withdrawals coming from the assets, whether it's scheduled withdrawals, cash flow shortages or surpluses, or RMDs, and then we can see the rate of return, the total return they're earning. So if we add these across, this would give us the elements to, to see how that total account balance is changing year by year. Moving on, then now we have the detail for their taxable accounts. So the program groups the assets by their type. So all taxable accounts get tracked together, equity and other accounts get tracked together. So that's what you'll see on these reports. Here you can see all the inflows and outflows affecting the taxable accounts, so the beginning year balance, any deposits, cash flow shortages or surpluses, withdrawals, the rate of return it's earning, and any taxable income that would be generated that would be factored in for their income tax reports. So we do that, you can see the differences here for uh, taxable and equity and other. For equity and other, we're looking at interest, dividend, capital gain, and appreciation. So the program will tax the different returns accordingly. And you can see that factored in on the far right hand side as well. It's going to keep track of capital gains as well. So if they have, for those equity and other accounts, it's gonna keep track of their cost basis ratio and change of basis. And it's going to know the annual capital gain or loss that needs to be factored on. Uh, factored in for those calculations. You can also have a loss that gets carried forward in the projection, so it knows the loss carry forward rules, so you can have that factored into your calculations. So next, just like the taxable account and equity and other, we can see the details for tax-free accounts, tax-deferred accounts, and then we get into retirement accounts, so individual one's retirement accounts here. We can see RMDs kicking in at age 70, individual two's retirement accounts, Roth accounts, and in this case, we also have an inherited IRA included. Then we get a summary of the retirement plan. So this groups the total retirement type assets or qualified type assets together. So you can see a detail of how that balance is changing with contributions, withdrawals, return, and RMDs, which are also included here. Next, we get into stock options. So if you have entered any stock options into the system, the program will keep track of what you've entered to, to determine the cash and tax effects of exercising and selling those stocks. So we can see the cash from sale and we can also see the reportable amount for taxes. This is kind of a summary, uh, as you might guess from the title. 
but then we have a more detailed breakdown of those stock options so you can see how those numbers are calculated for that summary report. Next we get into asset allocation and asset allocation is going to be uh, taking a look at how the clients are currently allocated versus a suggested allocation. Asset classes can be fully customized as, as well as the suggested allocations. So you can see the different class names here, reserve, income, growth and income. So you can customize these to, to the asset classes that you use in your planning practice and you can have up to 21 total asset classes. When the program goes to choose the client's custom allocation that we see on this column, it's purely looking at the risk tolerance level selected for the client, which in this case, this client has been set as a conservative investor. So it's choosing this column to, as their custom allocation. You can override that as well if you'd like to do something different. For the specific plan you're working on, if you look under Asset Summary, Allocation tab, you'll notice this Propose column, so you can use that instead and it will use the proposed rates you've entered as their custom allocation. Next, we just have an asset allocation graph and it's going to show how they're currently allocated versus a suggested allocation. This is followed by a more numbers view that's going to tell the clients how they would need to move their funds in and out of the different asset classes to come up with that suggested allocation. There's some information on risk and liquidity in this program as well. So you can see for liquidity, you can see the client's liquidity ratio for their total assets, as well as just their working assets, which are going to be purely investment assets. The liquidity that you're entering on the data input is used purely for this report and the following report. So back under asset details, where you're choosing liquidity, this is the report this is going to be used for. The next report, the final liquidity report, is just going to give a quick description of each one of these liquidity types. And then again, you can see those same ratios of their total assets, liquid assets, and their liquidity ratio. Then we get into some details of their rental real estate. So if you have entered any rental properties, like stock options, it's going to calculate the cash and tax effects of having rental real estate properties. So we can see the details of the property that's been entered. In this case, one property has been entered. We can see the total market value, the income generated from the rental property, the expenses associated with it, as well as how the, the mortgage information and how the balance is changing over time. The next report is going to show you the income and tax analysis for the property. So it's going to show you things like depreciation, taxable income, their net cash flow, the tax amount due or saved, and that's all going to be folded into the analysis. So it will include the cash pieces as well as the tax impacts and fold that into the main planning projection.